What's up everyone? It's Sandra. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm recording from beautiful Bali. Let me actually show you. Today I will talk about 8 tips on effective prompt engineering for language models. Prompt engineering, also known as prompt design, is a set of techniques that help us effectively communicate with an AI that generates text. Nailing prompt engineering will get you ahead of everybody else and maximize your productivity when working with language models. Now, I want you to remember a few key things when it comes to prompt engineering. First, it's really important to consider how long and how complex your prompt is going to be. You want to find the right balance between giving the model enough information to work with without overwhelming it with too much detail. Second, it's super helpful to make sure that the prompts you use represent the style and the type of communication that you want the model to engage in. Language models preserve the style of your prompt in your answers. So, if you want the model to communicate in Gen Z slang, make sure that your prompt is written in a Gen Z slang. Similarly, if you want the model to communicate in a professional manner, do the same for the professional prompt. Finally, it's wise to experiment and iterate on your prompts. The best way to find out what works for your model is to try different approaches and then see what yields the best results. With that in mind, here are eight tips for effective prompt engineering. Yo, yo, folks, here I am a few days later editing my video because I forgot to mention an important thing. These tips apply to any language models that you're working with, no matter the API or platform that you've chosen, or perhaps you've chosen a copywriting platform, and this also can be helpful for you then. One thing I want to mention is that it's really important to diversify, so make sure to check out different platforms out there. I'll probably make a video about it soon. All right, let's get back to it. To illustrate my point, I am playing with prompts in the Cohere Playground. I actually work at Cohere and I experiment with these prompts on a daily basis. Number one, start simple. When you're a beginner prompter, start with a simple prompt that focuses on one specific task or a conversation scenario. This will help you to get into the groove of prompt engineering and also help you see what kind of prompts work best for your model. It's very important to use simple and straightforward language in the communication with your model. An example list of instructions for your model could include write a paragraph on dot 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 or rephrase paragraph on dot 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 or summarize paragraph on dot dot dot. Number two, experiment and iterate. If you've ever called message anyone, you probably realize that the way you phrase your initial message can have a massive impact on whether somebody responds to it and how they do it. In this sense, there is a parallel between talking to your model and talking to a human being. How you communicate with your model is crucial. And so it's really important to try different approaches, different versions of your prompt, rephrasing a little your ask to see what yields best results. Experiment, experiment, experiment. Number three. Keep generating, a lot. When you're a beginner prompter, you typically get all giddy about your results and settle for the second or third best result that your model generated. You don't take the full advantage of this technology. Language models can generate your outputs in seconds and each of the outputs will be unique. So take advantage of that and generate as much responses as necessary to choose the utmost best output that fits your purpose. Every time you tweak something in your prompt, venture out to as far as 10th output and see which one yields the best result and go for it. Number four, provide examples. Now here's another parallel between communication with your model and communication with human beings. Typically when you're explaining to someone a new concept, examples are really handy and it's very similar with language models. When showing examples, you give better guidance to your model about the outputs that you want. The examples actually depend on what type of model you're using. There is generally two types of models, zero shot models that require no examples to move forward, just a simple instruction, and they are perfectly capable of solving such a task. At Cohere, we have a command model for this. And then there are ones that are called few shot that may respond to zero shot instructions without any examples but generally perform better if you give it a few examples to work with so that it understands better the context um yeah so know the nature of your model and you will know whether to use it or not number five give enough context you can easily help the model better understand your task and give better outputs for your task by providing enough context. For example, you can tell the model that you're trying to create a YouTube scenario about large language models. 
You can also tell it that you're looking for informative and fun video instead of outrageous and provocative one. You can also tell it that you're looking for a scenario that will be five minutes long rather than 50. You see where I'm going with this. The more context the model will have about the task at hand, the better it will be able to nail the outputs. Number six, cut out fluff and mistakes. Language models thrive at simple, step-by-step, -step, straightforward instructions. So avoid excessive, inessential information in your prompt. Similarly, if your inputs are grammatically incorrect, have typos or have some sort of awkward style, model responses won't get better than this. If you're on the lazier side of the spectrum, like myself, you can always use Grammarly to help you keep your prompts clean and stylistically correct. Number seven, break down your task. Take your task and then break it down into multiple subtasks and then try to generate outputs for each of these subtasks and see what happens. Instead of having this huge task of generating a YouTube video, you can ask the model to A, help you brainstorm the YouTube video ideas, B, help you generate an introduction to a YouTube video, C, help you come up with fun anecdotes for the video, etc., etc. There is a number of steps that you can break it down to and see what the model can do for you. Number eight, push the limits of yourself and of the model. Make sure that you're challenging yourself. It's really easy to fall into three, five comfortable options when working with your language model and run out of ideas for tasks that it can perform for you. Sit down with it and think about 10 or 20 or 30 different tasks that the language model can do for you and then go and ask it to do it for you and see what happens. We are still learning how this technology works. The list of what it can do is not exhaustive. If you come up with something cool and new, make sure to share it with the world because we want to learn about it and also because it helps the models to become better and better in the future. That's all for now. I hope these tips will help you engineer more efficient and effective prompts. While you're here, you might want to check out my other videos on the subject and also a book I wrote on the subject. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.